I want to get into uh, B your BKFC career a little bit now. So uh, as far as that goes, Hector Lombard was a big turning point for you. What what was it about your guys' beef? Was he not exactly accepting fights against you, so you really had to push his push his hand to fight you there? Yeah. Um, Hector um, disrespected the game by uh, coming into the BKFC. Originally, he came and he asked me for help. He wanted to get in shape. I got a few pictures of us, you know, uh, hanging out. And he's like, hey, man, help me get in shape. I think I can do big things for BKFC. You know, he came to my fight with Reggie Pena and he liked the way I fight and he wanted me to train him. And then when he did get into the UFC, I mean, when he did get into the BKFC, he started ignoring me. He started, you know, pretending I'm not around. He started muscling the promotion in order to keep me away from, um, um, uh, from the Miami promotions and everything. Even his first fight against uh, Dave Mundell, they fought at 205. These are two stubby guys that fought at 205, and then they forced me to fight um, Gustavo Trujillo, who was also a 205er, but these were like massive size difference, differences. And at the time, I just so happened to be like one of the top guys in the in the uh, BKFC. So, like, it just it just became this chess game of positioning me and Hector away from each other. And then they found a way to create a, a loop for him to the belt while I was already waiting for it. There just wasn't any belts yet. I was six six. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, <clears throat> so I was six and one waiting to get a, to get a, a, a you got me? I got you. You got, I got me? you. I was You're six, six and, and one. one. Waiting, yeah. Waiting to get a title fight. And then all of a sudden, God, I all do not deserve to still do that somehow. Oh yeah. That, that's why it keeps cutting out. So you were six and one about to get a title fight. And then what happened? Well, I had fought two title eliminators and I was waiting. I was next in line for the title. And then all of a sudden, there were five title fights in one night. And I wasn't mm. invited. Hector Lombard wanted to fight. And so they went around me and they went and picked up Joe Riggs, some guy that was two and one or something from way back. And they were like, okay, here's the title fight. And I was like, what? You know, and I, I watched, you know, I had just won the weekend before that or two weeks before that against Josh Dyer. And an impressive. I think I knocked him down four times. I won by KO in the it was it was awesome. And and it was just like, okay, I'm gonna come to this fight and I'm gonna watch this nonsense. And and should I just sit here and let them just, you know, give it to me? <laughs> and then I just couldn't sit there no more. When 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 he when he had that much trouble fighting Joe Riggs and he was puffing for air. And I'm I'm screaming from the sidelines, like, watch it, Joe, he's gonna do something dirty. I didn't know Joe. I wasn't, in, but I, I didn't have, I was rooting for Joe because Hector was a butt. So I'm like, you know, watch it, watch it. Yeah. Then Hector Lombard pulls Joe Reed's shorts and then sticks his thumb in his eye and then wins the belt. And the whole fight, all I can see is, oh, I would have beat him. Oh my God, I could have, there was an uppercut. Oh, there's, a, oh, he's tired. Wait a minute. These are two fights. And I told him I beat both those guys easily. And then I did. I did beat them both easily. So, ah, the rest is history, you know. <laughs> Hector Lombard, yeah. he, and he walked away in shame, and he never came back. And he's sitting somewhere under some rock, hoping BKFC fumbles, and we all fall off, you know. But, hey, a fight is a fight. Either you're the best yeah. or not. And when I'm no longer the best, I'm not ducking guys. I'm just going to get out of the way. You understand what I'm saying? I won't stand in somebody's way saying, I'm not going to fight that guy. He's pretty good. I don't want to chance it. Or rob them of an opportunity, even though oh, you know that, like... This is his life. He's got children to feed. Right. Get out of the right. way. Endorse him. And it's, if your time's gone, yeah, why are you going to do that? Hector Lombard, listen, honestly, business. Hector Lombard could have been a big part of the organization, fought fights here and there like Mike Perry, without actually challenging for the belt. He could have endorsed me. Like, this guy's pretty good. He's our child. And mm -hmm. still made money, still sold out shows in Miami, still did. Bro, come on. Why get in the way of a juggernaut? Soon as he got the belt, everybody was like, 
is he gonna have to fight that big guy? That's to tell you right <laughs> there. That's to tell you yeah. right there. Stop. Like, so so since he has the belt, what are they gonna do? Everybody was asking the same question. Oh well, they're gonna make him fight. They're gonna make him fight. And you saw what happened when we fought. I put a nice right. big knot on his head and kicked him up his ass and sent him on his way. <laughs> he did That's it facts though. You got to support. I think that the, that whole gatekeeping thing with any type of industry, it's not good. I think the way for winning and growth for everyone is to support, you know, and to not be a gatekeeper, or hold someone back, you know, you support they, they, them, wh whatever you got to do, you know. There used to be a saying, may the best man win. Yeah, I agree. That's all I, that's all it is. I'm not looking. Or, you know, best versus best and whoever's better is better. But at least you put the or, best versus the best. A hand out. I'm not looking for no favoritism. I'm not looking for it. And I've never got any. All the guys mm -hmm. that I fought, everything that I've done since I've been here, nothing was a giving. There was a time where I was just, I'm just the underdog every single time. But now I'm no longer the underdog because I've kicked so many people's ass. But that's how it's supposed to be. It's not a popularity, not a popularity contest. It's literally who is the best fighter. Whether you like me or not. Yeah, I'm who can prove himself? If you put your brother in there, I expect you to root for your brother, but don't expect me not to kick his ass. I'm the <laughs> best fighter. <laughs> yeah. If you put your best friend in there, hey, you did that. I'm the best yeah. fighter. You can love him all you want, but I'm the best fighter. And that's what it should boil right. down. We have a terrible history of, of choosing and picking and playing favorites, even with the Olympics, with... Mike Tyson in the Olympics with um with um Roy Jones Jr. cheated in the Olympics. Um um all of the What happened with them? Um I, I don't know. Oh yeah, I don't know. know what happened with them. What what happened with them in the Olympics? And you're young. I know they, the Olympics is kind of shady, but yeah, if they were all they're all super famous guys who were cheated out of gold medals and later on became the best in the world, the best. Uh, even Floyd. Even Floyd. So you got to yeah. understand that there's some point in which reality where you got to say, if your favorite guy needs your help, he's not the best guy. If he needs you to cheat for him, uh -huh. he's not the best guy. If you're going around picking and choosing and trying to, you you already know he's not the best guy when you're doing that. You're, you're trying to lost. Cheat. Right. But what you guys should do is team up with the best guy until you become That's the best right. guy. Stop, you know, more like Goku. <laughs> you know, stop trying to be a hater. Yeah. Because every time some weird judge holds these guys back, they still take over the world. Mayweather is arguably the best fighter in history of boxing and was cheated in the Olympics, a fight he obviously won. And now that judge and that guy, what happened to that guy that you cheated for? Some bum drinking at the pub on the corner. What'd you do it for? It's just the use. That's yeah, that's pretty wild. That's pretty like, wild. Go look at the guy you cheated for and see like go see what he's doing. Does he deserve it? Case, go look at the guy yeah. you cheated for. Find him now. You did not help him. Yeah. Well, you know what's cool though, is uh and this might be some free game for people. I'm sure you might have already like realized this. Um but it's like that negative energy, you know, that's why you're saying anybody who gets snubbed or deals with some bullshit, it's a lot of energy that goes behind, you know, trying to like map out somebody's demise. So that's I, why I think sometimes you can. Maybe it doesn't really like the way people describe it. They think like, oh, yeah, well, everybody's hating on it. So it makes them strong. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. But what it, do you think? It's not really the case. I just think that, of course, that guy was already great. You were just mm. a idol. You just didn't want to give him his props. You just wanted to, you know, every time he shoots the ball, he said, that's not going to go in. It goes in, buddy, whether or not you like it or not. So once we get out of the way, the guy will be great. I see. You see what I'm saying? He's just gonna... Regardless, it was more the person standing in the way. It wasn't him, the guy who, like, got robbed of an opportunity. Right. No, it's just, yeah, it's just, yeah, and it's going to be great regardless. The way Mayweather beat Fair that enough. guy, go back and watch those fights. The way Mike Tyson beat the guy that he was cheated for is not, not even close. It's like nothing. I gotta close. watch that. I never seen that one. Yeah, and um Holyfield too. Damn. It, it happens. It just happens all the time. <laughs> it just happens all yeah. the time. And um Yeah. And, and the and the thing that makes me great 
no one's ever cheated for me. So you take they, the hardest path, right? So when they ring the bell, whoo, you better have God with you. Because no one's ever cheated for me. And I'm a bitch. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so with, with that uh, Hector thing, what happened? Like, Joe Riggs was the champ. They surpassed you to give Hector the title. Hector won the well, title, and that's when you came in the ring. BKFC was a new organization. It was the vacant titles. Nobody had titles. Oh. Probably so they fought for the first one. Alamino was probably the only person with a title at the time. So all those titles, you know, we had to establish records before anybody could even get a title. And that's what I was told. Even though I was sitting around yeah. six and one, they were like, oh, yeah, you know, there's not enough uh, diversity to pass our titles. Then when Hector Lombard came into the organization, he went 2-0, and and all of a sudden, these titles started appearing. Yeah. You know, when um, Thiago Alves came to the to the BKFC, all of a sudden, a, a 175 title appeared. When, when um, you know, um, um, and so when we started getting more and more attention, the titles came out. They were up for grabs. So I started grabbing them. I see. <laughs> so I started grabbing And them. I guess... Yeah, you probably got overlooked. It's, it seems like because cause I was going to ask you, why do you think BKFC didn't see something in you to give you that first title fight even? But it seems like they two guys were UFC, former UFC fighters and they were trying to put, like, put a name, have a selling point there. Listen, the way it boils down and the way that I've looked at it into my life, you know, there's business plans. Everybody mm -hmm. has their plans. Like the Joker, remember he said, everybody's schemers. I hate schemers, you know. He's like, there's always some fucking plan, you know? There's always a yeah. plan. That's cool. I hate that too, to be honest, but... That's cool. You got your plans, I got mine. When I woke up at 4 a.m., yeah. punched the bag until 10 o'clock, and then I took a nap, and I woke up, and the only thing I could think about was going back and punching that bag, and I did that for years and years and years. Well, guess what, buddy? I got plans too. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, no, I hear you. You know what I mean? I got plans. And your plan was what? To go into the ring and, and, and start and, something and, after Hector won and that. Go and punch Hector Lombard in his head and put a knot on his head like a unicorn. <laughs> that was my plan. And it, and it worked. It worked out. So it all worked yeah. out. And um, eventually, like you say, I told them when I came to the organization that I was the best, that I had unique skills and that somebody, and you you will see. And I meant it. And right now, I'm the pound for pound best bare knuckle fighter in the world. Everything I said came true because everything right it was true everything i said that's right because everything i said was true yeah you haven't been lying at all and you've been no, proven that every every step of the way right 